Welcome back to the Cross Border Interview Podcast. My name is Christopher Brown, the host as always. Today we are joined in studio, well not in studio because we are in sort of a pandemic and everyone is socially distancing as is. We are joined by uh, Zoom by uh, over the internet by Ward 5 City Council candidate Raj Do- Dollywall. I apologize if I pronounced that wrong, but I, I tried to make sure that I got it right. Raj, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Chris, for having me. And yes, you did pronounce my name right. No, it was uh, good. Awesome. Thanks. So Raj, I've got to get the uh, the first question out of the way. If you've listened to the show, my viewers and my listeners will know what the first question is going to be. Where's your sense of duty to serve come from? Where does my sense of duty to serve uh, come from? Uh, it comes from uh, my background, which is my parents brought me here as an immigrant. Um, they were immigrants. They brought me here uh, when I was a kid. Um, I, my parents worked hard uh, to give a good life to me and my brother. Uh, I worked along with them. I was uh, I tell everybody when I was in high school, I, I, I was also doing graveyard shift at a Max convenience store. Uh, I would, uh, yeah, I would start at 11, finish at seven, go to school at 8:30, back at. Uh, 3.30, quarter to four, in bed at four, <laughs> have that nap or sleep till 10, and then back. The grind started like that. Um, I, I saw uh, my parents uh, work hard as, as, a, as, a, as a janitor, as a, as a dishwasher, every job they could get uh, to, to put food on our table. Um, uh, and it, right from the day one, it taught me the values and virtues of working hard. What does work hard mean? For, for in our lives and then also they taught me to to give back to the community i was a volunteer from uh, for, started volunteering in 1997 with different organizations right uh, be it uh, my religious organization at my sikh temple or with calgary public library and so yeah so from day one we were taught to give back to the community the community that uh, embraced us the community that gave us so much gave me a chance to live that i call canadian dream uh, so I did that, and then for the last uh, many years, uh, uh, Chris, I've been volunteering with, the, again, Cal- Calgary Public Library. I was on the board of Northeast Family Connection out of uh, Ward 5 there um, last year during pandemic. Uh, Sikh Temple Dishmish Culture Center started a program, No Hungry Tummy. Uh, I was fortunate enough to volunteer with them for three months. I was uh, driving my car all around the city delivering meals to people's doorsteps, needy people or people who couldn't get out. Um, so all those things. Things. Um, uh, I always had this this uh, desire uh, to serve the public. That's how I was brought up. Uh, that's uh, based on my volunteering work. I I got hooked to it, if you want to call it that. Uh, and 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 then uh, yeah. And then this year I got that opportunity uh, where I said, okay, um, this is my opportunity now to put my hand up and see if I can uh, if I can go and work, go and run for council and when elected councillor serve the community at a different level. Uh, and also one other thing, Chris, what inspired me on that was also that I've been living in this ward for more than 25 years in, in Ward 5, original Ward 5. I grew up in Rundle. I attended uh, Lester Peterson High School. And some of those issues, uh, Chris, they had been exactly the same. They have been exactly the same that, that, that they were 25 years ago. They haven't changed. They haven't moved. The challenges have been the same. So that was also another um Another reason I said, well, now is the time. Let's bring that change. Uh, let's move our Ward 5 forward. And yeah, that that's where my everything that I'm doing now, that's the background. You, you've you literally taken about five of my follow-up questions to my first question out of my mouth. So, I, But I'm All still going to ask them because I want to get into it a little bit deeper with you here. You talk about the election in 2021 and earlier this year, you made that decision. Was it a hard decision to actually think to yourself, okay, I've given back volunteer wise, I've given back through the nonprofit organizations. I think the next progression in this giving back to my community is elected politics. What was that decision based on? Because when council candidates put their name forward, they have an idea of what they want accomplished if elected. What were those issues for you? And was it a hard decision to say, okay, I'm going to put my name in the hat because I I feel like my voice is the right voice for Ward 5 in 2021? Yeah, I know, Chris, uh, like I said, um, 
uh, some of those issues I've been noticing them, seeing them from last 25 years, they haven't changed. Uh, when I volunteer in the community, when I am at Calgary Public Library, where I teach, our, uh, where I work with our new immigrants, where I work with our seniors, I'm a technology coach. I teach them how to use computer. Uh, I teach them uh, how to build resume. I, I help them applying for the jobs. When I was on the board of Northeast Family Connection, we were working with the, very closely with the, 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 with the social services to provide uh, need, uh, need uh, services to, to the families that need them most. When I was, when I was volunteering with Citizen for Citizen Society, uh, I've seen these issues. I have come across these challenges. I've heard firsthand, right? And, and that, that's, that's why this year when I looked at that and I said, you know what, uh, we need that strong voice at City Hall. What we need to do is we need to move our vote for, forward. I, as a father, as a father of two kids, I see some of the issues that are going to directly uh, directly affect my kids uh, when even now or more, more importantly, when they grow up, uh, we got to fight against uh, systemic barriers like systemic racism, ageism, ableism. Uh, I, I know how much climate change is going to affect their lives. So those are the issues that are very near and dear to me. And I want to I want to work on them now. So m when my kids are kids, when I say all our kids here in the city of Calgary, when they grow up or when they go look for opportunities, they see equity and equality. And another reason was my wife, right? Uh, she, she was always a big supporter of me uh, running for office. She always told me, Raj, you have what it takes to, to run for office and make that change and bring that change. And I always kind of shied away from doing that, but she always said, well, if you want to bring change, you got to be the change. It starts with you. So this year she was really, uh, really, she pushed me and she said, Raj, let's do it together. Let's let's reach out to the community. We reached out to the community and the community said, yes, Raj, we, we need a uh, strong representation. And uh, I and we think you could do that. You could be that bold, unapologetic, unafraid voice that talks on our behalf. So, yeah. Now, I, 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 I've been following you on social media, so I know you're out talking to the residents of Ward 5. I know you're out there socially distancing, knocking on doors, talking to the people that you want to represent. Any candidate who is not doing that is doing a disservice to the people that they want to represent. You talk about systemic racism, ableism, ageism, climate change. Are these the issues that people at of Ward 5 are bringing to your attention when you're knocking on the, their doors? Or are there issues that they're bringing to your attention that you say, okay, I've lived here for 25 years, but I didn't think that this was an issue. And I'm glad someone's bringing it to my attention because I want to address that issue if elected on October 18th. No, Chris, um, I don't want to make theories about people's issues or challenges. I want to hear from them. And my priorities are not my priorities. They're their priorities. I just want to be that voice that go to city council and talk on their behalf, right? The priorities are going to be set by them. This is what we want. I, and I always tell them, it's not about you. It's not about me. It's about all of us. And some of these and, and, and growing up here, uh, living in the community, living in Ward 5, worshipping in Ward 5, volunteering in Ward 5, working in Ward 5, all the issues that I'm hearing are actually the issues that I've faced myself over the last many years, right? So when I go to doors, uh, people are, people definitely, Ward 5 is very diverse, multicultural, people from different backgrounds, ethnicities, demographics, and, and, and definitely some of these issues resonate with them. I know families, when I go there as a father, when I discuss with them, they as parents tell me, yes, we are worried about the safety of our kids. We are worried about our kids not getting that equal opportunity when they grow up because of racism. When I go, I have my grandfather, right? I see my grandfather when he goes to city hall, or sorry, to, when he goes for low income uh, passes, uh, when he used to go for low income passes at uh, Calgary Transit, he used to feel humiliated because they used to ask him for all this paperwork and all that. And I'm hearing the same thing from my seniors where they're telling me, Raj, can you help us with that? I'm hearing from them small things that I was aware of because my grandfather used to tell me that I go to park and there is not a good place to sit. There is no bench or anything. And I'm hearing that now from my seniors in Ward 5 where they want benches, where they want gazebos so they can live that dignified uh, retirement. They can enjoy that dignified retirement, right? So I'm, I'm 
some of those issues I have been through them and I'm listening from residents, but it's it's confirming to me that yes, some of those issues and challenges are exactly the same. My northern communities, uh, Redstone, Cornerstone, Cityscape, to some extent Skyview, they don't have schools. They were promised schools. S uh, Skyview, first houses started building there in 2009, Chris, and they were told there will be a school, even though it's a provincial jurisdiction. Until now, they don't have a school. And, 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 and I feel their pain as a parent because I have my kids who go to school and I, I feel the pain that when they got to drive 45 minutes just to drop them off, 45 minutes just to go pick them up. When they're at work, they're stressed out. They're always thinking about parents. They're worried if they got off the bus safely or they got on the bus. So as a parent, I, those are the I feel too. So I tell them I want to be advocate for bringing more schools. Other issue, big box grocery stores, they were promised uh, something is coming in corner store, nothing. Um, so I'm seeing those issues. Uh, and, 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 and another one is they, they have anxiety about our economic recovery, Chris, because many of them lost their jobs or they were on SERB due to COVID. And, and I, as a father, as a, as a husband, as a homeowner, I know how how um, how stressful that is because I don't want to go to bed at night and just stare at my ceiling and see how my next uh, how I'm gonna pay my next mortgage, how I'm gonna afford to take my kids on vacation. So we gotta work on those things to make sure that we are giving them help, small business owners, right? Give them that help, uh, reduce uh, maybe red taping, give them help on the taxes if we can work with them. So yes, as a father, as a parent, as a homeowner, as a I'm, I'm, I relate with them and I hear those issues. Now, you have brought up a lot of issues that I want to try and get into, into because I'm a policy wonk. I like when politicians talk about policy and how they're going to help. One of the big ones, and I think you and I will both agree to this, is COVID-19. COVID-19 is going to be the biggest challenge this next council has to deal with. The recovery, the fourth wave. Um, and I think I can say this without uh, insulting anyone, but Ward 5, Ward 10 were the hardest hit, were the hardest hit with COVID-19. The numbers were skyrocketing. They're going up again. How do you, as the next city council uh, councillor for Ward 5, envision helping everyone get ahead? Because we are looking at it as a city issue. But when you see larger numbers in the Northeast compared to the Southwest, Southeast, you have to worry that it's a counselor's issue to advocate for better policy, better help for the people of their riding. So their ward, how do you envision doing that? How do you envision helping everyone of Ward 5, but in essence, everyone of the city of Calgary to get ahead and recover from this pandemic? Yeah, and, and especially for Ward 5 residents, uh, and I salute them because uh, they have shown time after time how resilient they are. Even in, in the worst of the times or crisis, they, they, have, uh, they have stood tall and, 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 and took them those challenges uh, on face. And, and last year was uh, just one of those years where they got hit by hail damage, then the COVID, but they just were so resilient, they fought back. And, and most of Ward 5 residents, they're frontline workers, and they were right there uh, fighting COVID, if you will, uh, trying to uh, bring it under control. Um, I think, I think th that's, that's a testament to, to, to their courage. Um, and uh, so my plan is, uh, again, <coughs> as a counselor, we got to make sure that we are prepared, first of all. We are prepared to for these kind of um, these kind of I don't want to call them uh, crisis, but they are crisis, right? Uh, even hail damage. How can we help them? How can we even um, I know building code is under federal provincial jurisdiction, but work with uh, work on bylaws or something to make sure we bring more um, climate 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 resilient um, infrastructure. In, at least in their Ward 5. So my Ward 5 residents are not going through the same pain and, 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 and recovery in, in maybe even two years time, right? Uh, we got to make sure that we look at, our, uh, look at our procedures and policies at city and see how, what we have learned through COVID uh, and put those best practices in, 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 uh, in, uh, in, our, uh, in our plans. And we also got to make sure uh, that uh, 
uh, we got to we look at everything from sustainability perspective we got to say okay how prepared we are if let's say tomorrow another crisis hit and what is the recovery plan because we got to make sure recovery plan is also there if there is no recovery plan we will be exactly in the same position as we are now where we will be picking up pieces and trying to put the picture together we got to make sure now that we diversify our economy in a way right at the city uh, we but for that we need to do many things we got to attract new business to attract new business we got to show them that city is ready city is open for business how are we going to do that we got to make sure that we uh, we empower our youth uh, our youth that's uh, that is has skills and stuff we got to stop them from moving out of the city and keep that skill set here so so business owners who are bringing the shop here they can they can utilize them second will be the infrastructure transit infrastructure let's build this infrastructure that's more affordable that's more accessible and safe because if that's if we can provide that then businesses will be definitely attracted to the city we got to make city calgary a vibrant city we got to make in, in, an inclusive city we got to bring down those barriers so more people are encouraged to move here so that's what my vision is for for this city moving forward uh, uh, when we come out of this economic recovery that's what the economic recovery looks like to me maybe working with calgary economic development uh, and, and looking for those other opportunities that that maybe we need to unearth so yeah I want to talk about something you just brought up there for a second. You talked about the hailstorm that uh, ravaged the northeast Calgary, which is the the very northeast of Calgary. When you're talking to the people who were affected by that hailstorm, are they still struggling? Are they are are you still walking around and seeing houses that are still left damaged from that hailstorm? And how can the city help those people? How can the city because they have tried to reduce taxes for them? They've tried to help them with uh, some type of program to bring in uh, contractors to help rebuild, but if you're still seeing it how can you get to everyone ensure that everyone has access to the proper funding and proper resources to ensure that their house gets back to normal their cars get fixed are you still seeing it and how do we help them no chris and 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 you know what my family was affected by that my uncles my aunt they both live in saddle ridge my other aunt who lives in savannah my cousin who lives in uh, is, is lives in redstone they were all affected they they all of them they all of them got new roofs new sidings so i've seen it first hand right i've seen the pain they went through yesterday i was door knocking and and i i was talking to this gentleman named trevor father of two uh, lost his job during covid affected by hailstorm and he was almost in his tears because he didn't get the help that he felt he should have got i could feel his pain right again as a father as a homeowner right and 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 for instance when first of all at the council we again like we said we got to start work, working towards a climate resilient infrastructure approach which means let's if it takes bylaws um province is going to probably in, couple of years or whatever very soon they're going to look at uh, building code maybe work with our province to make sure we are putting more re- robust more resilient material and and asking our our builders and developers collaborating with them right second the roof uh, subsidy that they they gave uh, it was i think little too late uh, and little um, uh, it was 3000 they could have uh, in my opinion they we could have done maybe more um and it, it should have been more targeted to northeast uh, i'm not saying other people shouldn't access it but northeast was affected the most so it should have been targeted help not open for entire city um there's nothing wrong with it um, but uh, more targeted approach would have helped the the homeowners that really needed help and then um yeah so those are the things that and maybe even even uh, and i don't know if it's going to if, if it was possible i i at that point i even wrote to the province and i said could you guys start some sort of a credit line where homeowners can take that credit it will it should be on uh, uh, on flexible terms which means if they can return this money within certain months uh, no you, you won't charge any interest but if they exceed that uh, term the then the repayment term should be flexible more tied with the 
when they recover, right? So those kind of innovative ideas uh, that I have, materials, infrastructure, um, financial help through some sort of micro loans, and third, like you said, giving them break on uh, on on property taxes, especially to our seniors who own houses in those areas, right? So these are all ideas. I always say, you know, as as a counselor, my job will be not just to think outside the box think without any box around see what we can do to help our residents especially when they're struggling now out of covid and 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 hailstorm in ward five now we we talk about monetary issues here and this is the part of the show that i like talking about budget covid 19 has changed the name of the budget this next budget cycle which next council will be voting on in november will be tough because we have had resources and income cut because of businesses closing up shop because of COVID-19. We have had businesses leave the city because of the oil and gas downturn. How do you envision looking at the budget and ensuring that the residents of Ward 5 and the city of Calgary, people are getting their fair share of services for the money that they're putting in for taxes. Because I talk to residents of Ward 5, I have family in Ward 5, I have family in Ward 10, I have family across this, uh, in-laws across the city. And what I hear is, I don't feel like my value for my dollar, tax dollar, is what the service value is. I'm, I'm, getting, I'm not getting equal service value for tax dollars. How do you ensure that that happens in the next four years? No, no, uh, Chris. I don't. I don't see our residents as taxpayers. I see them as investors who are investing in their in our city, and they deserve a uh, they deserve the best return. So that's what I'm going to fight for. I got to make sure that the services are maintained. That I got to make sure services are improved upon. And at the same time, uh, I I always I, I live with uh, what. I live with these things. When a budget comes, I have dealt with projects uh, in my at my job. I have dealt with projects over one billion dollars, and I've always used few things, few fundamentals. One is always seek under, understanding and, 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 and try to understand, is it necessary to do this? Second is questioning attitude. Again, is this the right thing to do? It Is there another, another alternative? How about if we do this, can we really not do that? So that, and the third one is collaboration. And then fourth one is accountability. I'm accountable to my residents and I want to hold other decision makers accountable. I, we, our, our lifestyle shouldn't be, at least from residents' perspective, the services that they are getting shouldn't be incumbent upon budget decisions. We shouldn't be cutting budget if it's affecting people's lives on a daily basis. If, for instance, um, uh, uh, low, uh, low fair entry recreational program that we have, it's not uh, applicable to even Genesis. It's only applicable. Apl applicable to, to Willis Square. I want to make sure that those programs are brought into board fives because lo lo there's lots of low-income uh, families who can't afford to put their kids into recreational activities because those are shouldn't be dependent on budget. Though we shouldn't be cutting on maintenance budget or parks. I think city manages over thousand parks in this in this city, uh, and we shouldn't be cutting back on those maintenance budgets because that affects people's life. Because if we don't cut grass, if we don't weed it, if we don't do that kind of stuff, what happens is residents end up suffering because these are the green spaces that they need to enjoy their lifestyle, especially in, during summer. So we gotta be very innovative. Um, but at the same time, we got to look at every dollar that we are spending and see what value are we creating with that. Is it quantif Can it be quantified? Maybe not every dollar can be quantified, but is there a qualitative uh, benefit to our, our, our citizen? That's what we need to look at uh, from budget perspective. Yes, you said city is, uh, we, our uh, resource sources are very, um, uh, very limited. Uh, maybe that's another collaboration we need to do with our provincial government. Yes, they are short on cash maybe uh, too, but uh, look for avenues where we can get that extra resource sources and see if we can bring in more money into city's pocket through provincial channels. Now, you know and I know that this pandemic has not just been Calgary specific. It is a worldwide pandemic <clears throat> and businesses are struggling themselves. 
they are leaving municipalities and they're consolidating, they're uh, putting four large business headquarters into one large business headquarters. And usually it's not typically Calgary, it's Toronto, it's Vancouver, it's Dallas, it's, it's coming out of the city. How do we attract new businesses when other municipalities are doing the exact same thing? Because you talked about the big box stores that you want to see up in the Northeast part of the riding when other municipalities and uh, are doing the exact same thing and they're trying to bring them and resources are low and finances are hard to come by right now. How do we attract businesses to actually open up shop in Ward 5 in locations where they are desperately needed at this time? Well, first of all, I think uh, we got to make uh, Calgary that it city. Okay. And we got to make it that it city. And for that, we got to make Calgary resilient uh, an inclusive city. Uh, so people are attracted to Calgary. People think Calgary is not just a place to work, but also to raise their kids. That Calgary provides all those uh, that all those benefits that uh, a person look for and when they choose their lifestyle. For that, again, Chris, we will have to, and Ward 5 is a perfect example. Ward 5 uh, is mostly um, lots of jobs that are, cre are created by um, mom and pop shops. Most of the small business owners, they employ um, lots of uh, Ward 5 residents, uh, right? And many of these um, stores are culture sensitive store that they, they cater to certain cultures. So, so it's very important we provide them that help. Um, how can we do that? We can maybe look at uh, taxation um, uh, taxation process and see what how can we help them. Second will be maybe even look at the process of cutting some red taping at the city and, and see how we can make those processes efficient. And then uh, again, infrastructure, I talked about more active networking, right? Um, and so if we have that kind of infrastructure, which is, uh, I always say 5A, always accessible to all ages and ability, um, uh, and, and, and build that transit. For instance, if a business is coming in and um, our youth uh, out of Ward 5, they want to do a part-time job. Uh, right now, due to limitation on transit, there's only one car in, in home and they don't have access to it, but they're limited by transit. They, they cannot go out and work. So we got to build transit system active network that they are able to access it and go to their work, go uh, do that part time job. This will also attract more businesses. Uh, we got to we got to make Calgary a complete city. Um, we, we will try to what we need to try to do is got to make sure that it's a 15 minute uh, uh, strategy that if you want to access anything, you want to run to your convenience store for a jug of milk or you want to go to a big box grocery store, it's, it shouldn't be more than 15 minutes for you. What that means is when people start choosing city as a place to live, businesses will see that advantages and they will get more attracted to city. And again, as I said, we got to keep our talent. We got to make sure our youth is not leaving the city. We got to make sure we create a vibrant city. We got to make sure that we revitalize our downtown. 15, 000, 15 million square feet of empty office space. How are we going to fill that up? We got to attract more people to live downtown. That means more tourism will come downtown. That means more uh, businesses will get attracted to downtown. So we got we have all these ideas. Some of them are already in 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 process uh, in in place, and some of these ideas that I'm working on uh, that uh, that I will bring that input to already existing uh, plans. I just looked at the clock and I can't believe we've already been chatting for a half hour. It does not feel like that, but I, wa I want to make sure that we get in the, uh, this part of the, uh, the interview because uh, I'm cautious of time and I don't want to take you away from being out at the doorstep talking to your residents. I want to talk to you about your role as the counselor. You know and I know that you are one vote. You are one vote in a sea of 15 people. You will have to negotiate, talk with, uh, collaborate with counselors who might not have the best interest for your award. They are looking at their awards and you are looking at your award. But at the end of the day, you have to look at the bigger picture. You are there to represent your ward, but you are also there to, at the end of the day, represent the city of Calgary. That means mm -hmm. sometimes from time to time, Ward 5 might be left out. I've asked this question to all candidates. Your ward might be left out of the budgeting process. Yes, some things might come, snow clearing, fire, police, hospitals, uh, all the X, Y, and Z issues that are going to come. But sometimes your road might not be repaired. Your sidewalk might not be repaired. 
how do you envision working with all counselors to advocate for the city, but ensure that your ward doesn't get left behind? Because I talk to uh, ward counselors and they all say, I'm not going to make, I'm going to make sure my ward doesn't get left behind, but sometimes it might have to. How do you do that? How do you balance that approach? Yeah, no, definitely. Like you said, uh, for me to get anything, not anything, sorry, for every, for every motion to pass, uh, we uh, we need uh, eight votes. That uh, eight votes. That means I need seven from uh, other votes, and I'm alone. I'm one in those fifteen. So I need to collaborate, um, and and that's what I've been doing uh, in my career as a professional. Uh, like I said, I've I've worked on projects over one billion dollars, delivered them on cost, on schedule, and I've worked with multiple key, multiple stakeholders which had different vested interests, and I was always aware of that. I was always aware how to that I'm not going to be able to keep everybody happy, but I should be able to make sure that most of them get what they, they can live with for, if you want to call that, right? Um, so I was always uh, looking for the needs that what they need, not, uh, not uh, what they feel is, is, is good to have, um, cater to their must to have. And that's the, the whole criteria. And that's how I worked and collaborated with them. And that's the approach I've, I'm going to take to the city council. Yes, definitely. Sometimes my ward might not get what I'm uh, advocating for, but then that will be my job to go back to my residents and explain it to them and tell them exactly why I couldn't get it done. And we're, and also tell them what my next plan is going to be and also see if how they can help me to achieve that in next business cycle or next budget cycle. Right. So it will be that two way conversation, two way communication that I believe in. And, and, and I'm, I'm pretty sure my Ward 5 residents, um, they, they, what I've heard from the doors right now, door knocking, they're fully aware of this, that Raj, you are a single vote and you cannot get everything done. And, and we are def definitely willing to work with you and help you in any way shape or form that you need our help and because i tell them it's collective it's not just me it's not just you it's all of, all of us so yeah i think the best thing would be if i don't get something done i will come back i'll tell them what the next plan is and what i'm going to do differently next time and where i need their help and then on to piggyback onto that statement i want to ask you about in your ward you have many diverse opinions. Uh, if you go pull every single person in your riding, in your ward, they will tell you one issue that they believe is the top issue that has to be addressed. You are one person on that vote. You will have to go and sometimes you will have to, might not be able to get to that issue in Saddle Ridge. You might have to worry about Falcon Ridge at this time. And maybe Redstone is a key issue in the next time that you have to go talk in front of council. How do you balance that approach? How do you ensure that everyone's voice is heard at the council table when you have such a diverse community in your uh, ward? Yeah, no, uh, that's it's, you're totally right, Chris. Uh, every house, when I do knock, every house has a different challenge and different issue. Uh, that's why I, 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 I'm gonna be. Uh, this is what I, I tell people. Uh, um, I'm not a politician. I'm doing this because I want good for my community. So I'm gonna be honest with them. We are in this together. I'm gonna be very transparent with them and honest. And I'm gonna tell them, sorry, cannot get this done this time. And they appreciate that. They say, if you're honest with us, Raj, we will work with you. We are willing to work with you. So what I tell them now, I go there and I say, I don't want to make theories about what your issues or challenges are. I want to hear from you. I want to know your priorities because these are not my priorities. These are your priorities. I'm just going there as, as your voice uh, to tell them what your priorities are. Am I going to be have, able to sort out all these challenges? No. Um, am I going to have the solution for all your problems? No, but I'm going to be honest and tell you and why it, I can't do it and when I will be able to do it. But let's go after, let's bucket these challenges into top three, four priorities. Once we bucket them, let's work on them and find solutions to, to them. And the solutions I don't have, my commitment is I'm going to keep working hard to find those solutions. And later, sooner or later, definitely we will find those, but now three, four buckets is what we will focus on, get them done and 
other issues, even if we can get then 50%, at least we had some progress and we got something done and move from there. Now, again, again, cautious of time here. I want you to put on your time hat. You're jumping forward to October 19th. October 19th, you are officially declared, well, October 18th, the night of October 18th, after polls closed, you are declared the new counselor designate for Ward 5. You wake up the next morning on October 19th. What is priority number one for you? Uh, priority number one for me uh, uh, in Ward 5 will be uh, working right away on, uh, on making our neighborhood safer. Uh, I have heard from many residents, uh, I think one common theme I have heard from uh, uh, toward my door knocking is safety, 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 safety of uh, my residents, safety of their kids when they're playing outside, safety of their, their parents, safety of their grandparents. As a parent, I always keep the safety of my kids and my parents uh, paramount because I want to make sure when my kids are out there, um, they're safe. So that's one thing I want to, and, 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 and our previous counselor, he started that process. He put together a safety task force, right? Um, and so I'm going to, I'm going to work from day one. I'm going to reach out to our, our, our stakeholders, uh, law enforcement agencies or other agencies and start understanding uh, how can we, how can we make our residents safe not just within their houses, but outside in the public spaces. How can we make sure, I know when I was growing up, I could w walk to my convenience store at midnight for, 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 uh, for a jug of milk without worrying about uh, my, my personal safety. That's not the case right now. So we got to make sure how they feel safe in the public space and also at their house and in, inside their house. And, and I'm going to work with law enforcement agencies to find some solutions. Um, maybe those solutions will be community driven. Community might have those ideas. Community. So I'll talk to them. I'll engage them in these discussions. I'll make sure we collectively together find those solutions and and that will be my number one priority also one thing chris i also want to make uh, let you know is that housing affordability is and poverty are another issues that i'm hearing uh, so that's also going to become my prior priority because 2013 um city of calgary unanimously um, adopted uh, enough for all strategy uh, to eradicate uh, poverty in our city so I want to make sure that we stay on course and put some milestones in place so we can we can make sure 77,000 Calgarians have slipped into poverty during COVID. To me, living in the, one of the most prosperous cities in North America, that's not acceptable. So let's start working on that. Um, housing affordability, I said, uh, what I'm hearing from people mostly in Castle Ridge and Falcon Ridge, new immigrants um, and, and, and low income families, that's an issue. In city, we need to start partnering up, partnering up with our provincial or federal governments and start building more of these affordable housing or converting existing units into affordable housing. So that's an, also another prop, uh, priority. And, and my personally, another personal pro, uh, priority for me is, um, Chris, to work, work uh, tirelessly uh, um, on truth and reconciliation. Um, that's another big issue for me. Uh, fly, uh, white uh, goose flying report was came after uh, in 2015, right after Truth and Reconciliation Commission calls to action, 94 calls to action were submitted. I want to see some progress on that as a counselor. I want to make sure that reflects in inclusiveness that I'm talking about. So these are some of my priorities, definitely. A couple are, one is my personal, I'm, I'm, I'm a big advocate. Others are what I'm hearing from my residents. Um, it's kind of, it's not ironic, but it's a kind of a symmetry here that uh, your this episode is actually airing after the person who wrote that white, uh, white goose flying report. So I, I, it's just, it's weird that I have, I've, I've done many of these interviews and you are the first candidate to actually address it outside of the author who's running as well. So thank you so much for that. Um, I want to no, go you. back. I want to go back for a second because you just mentioned something, and I gotta get it on record. I gotta know where you stand on this. You talked about safety. You talked about uh, working with the Calgary Police Service. 
I want to know there is being calls to defund the police. And this is, I would ask this to anyone who brought up the police service. There's been calls to defund the police. There's been calls to reallocate money that the police gets to other issues. Where does you, where do you stand on the defund the police issue, but also how do we better uh, equip our police services to ensure that they're making our streets safe? Yeah, no, that's a good question, Chris. Here's here's the thing, right? Uh, I like I said before, there's few fundamentals uh, that I, I work on, uh, work based on, and one of them is seeking knowledge uh, and understanding. So I want to seek that knowledge and understanding. I want to work with our police and understand uh, how can we help them uh, to make uh, to work so they can work effectively how can we make sure that they are not their resources are not uh, stretched they're not stretched out how can we make sure that we they have enough resources to, to deal with what they deal on daily basis so that's one thing and second is cautioning attitude definitely and see uh, what they are doing right now is that diverting them from the real problem which is solving the crime right and is there another mechanism, maybe an alternative crisis response mechanism that can help alleviate some of the pressure that they are going through right now? And necessarily what that means is uh, not defunding the police. It's, it's, it's looking at alternatives and see what, how those alternatives can help us. But it has to happen with collaboration. It has to happen when the our Calgary police is on board and we're on the table, sorry, and we're listening to them. We are trying to understand how can we help them because as a counselor, I'm there to support them, not make their lives uh, uh, harder. Because at the end of the day, they are the ones who are, who are there to keep Calgarians safe they're the ones who also are, uh, are uh, have their own personal lives. So we don't want to create more trauma or stress in their personal lives. So definitely those are the conversations I'm looking forward to have with, uh, with our police services and see uh, what kind of mechanism is something with, which is a win-win for everybody, which is our police can focus on exactly what their focus should be fighting the crime and then maybe these other uh, other mechanism other alternative models crisis crisis management model or crisis response model can focus on other issues that maybe our police services uh, uh, is is not equipped uh, to 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 deal with oh, uh, now uh because yet again, we are days away from the election. This is airing in October. Um, you will need help. You will need people to come out and support you on election day to be able to implement things that we've talked about in the last 40, 45 minutes. I want you to take a moment, look at the camera, talk to the people of Ward 5 who are listening to this. And we do have a large listenership because it seems like every time we put out a Ward 5 candidate, it skyrockets. So to the Ward 5 residents who are listening to this, why should you be their next city councillor? Take as long as you need and go ahead. Uh, why? Because I'm one of them. Uh, I am their, I am their, their, their son. I'm their friend. I'm their neighbor. I grew up in original Ward 5. I've lived all my life in Northeast. I'm rooted to the ground. I've heard firsthand what the challenges, what the issues are. I did my first job in Northeast. I worship in Northeast. I volunteer in Northeast, you know, and and, I, and these are the communities where I volunteer most of the time. So I, I listen to them on daily basis. I listen to our seniors when I go to parks, when, I, when I'm teaching them computer skills or uh, technology skills at universe, I mean, sorry, at Calgary Public Library. I deal with our youth during, uh, through my volunteering with Citizens for Citizen or other youth mentorship programs. I I, I go and listen to our 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 our, our, our sisters and our, our mothers and see what their issues are. So I'm rooted there. I grew up in this community. My parents brought me as as a, as an immigrant, and most of the residents in Ward Five they migrated here from other countries. So their story is my story. I have seen all those challenges. I have seen. I, I was. I was. I have seen the challenges that they faced. I faced them in my life, and and I have. 
I have shared their successes. I have celebrated their successes, right? So I'm one of them and, and, and I'm just a common person like them. And as a common person, I understand the day-to-day -day struggles that we face. And these are some of them are very min, uh, minute struggles, but they but all they need is someone to address them, someone to understand them. And without understanding, we cannot move forward. That's why I'm, I, I want them to, to, to vote for me or show their trust in me because I will not let them down. I will move with them together into that next future which is going to be different than our past i want to build together with them that tomorrow that is going to be different than yesterday i want to make sure together we build our ward five and move forward i want to make sure that nobody's left behind in ward five i want to make sure that we are inclusive society and we are proud of where we live i want to make sure my, our red our kids, our youth, when they grow up, they can say proudly that Ward 5 was the best ward uh, in Calgary in which they grew up. So all those things, I want to take pride in, in our Ward 5. Um, I know some people uh, talk about stigma and that comes with living in Ward 5. Let's eradicate that. We need that strong, unapologetic, unafraid voice in the city hall, and I'm willing to give them that. And I, like I always say, it's not about you it's not about me it's about all of us together and together we will move forward so yeah i'm getting great great response chris on the on the doors i'm listening to them i believe in two-way conversation i'm just going to be their voice they are coming to counsel with me right it's their priorities i'm just going to be the face out there uh, fighting for them so yeah hopefully they uh, on october 18th um I'm pretty sure October 18th, they will put trust in me and elect me as their new counselor. Now, I have tried to ask as many questions as I possibly can during this interview, but I guarantee you there is someone yelling at their car radio right now. There is someone yelling at the YouTube screen that is watching this right now and telling me, why didn't you ask this question? Why didn't you talk about this subject? Now, for the people who are listening, people who are watching this, who want to reach out, who have an issue because you are one person, you are trying to get to as many doors as possible, but let's be honest, the chances of getting to every single door and meeting every single resident is very minute. So for those who are listening, who might have not met you yet, who have not been able to talk to you yet, how can they get involved? How can they talk to you? How can they ask you a question about their issue that they have and possibly sway their vote to you? Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, I'm gonna first of all, um, I like I, I'm trying my best, Chris. Like you said, there's about uh, uh, twenty eight thousand doors in in Ward Five. I'm not gonna be able to hit all of them. I'm gonna be honest. I'm trying to hit at least half of them. Uh, so I'm well on my way to it. I think by, by before election day, we're gonna hit uh, half of them, which is uh, which was my, my intention because I want to hear from people. And th those folks I couldn't meet uh, on the doors. The best place is to go to my website, www.votraj.ca. You can, my phone number is there. You can give me a call. My phone number is 587-717-9090. Let's set up something. I'll come to your door, definitely with, with a mask on, keeping two meter distance. We got to do that because safety above all else. And, and let's have those conversations. Uh, and, and you can always find me on social media, Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, Vote Raj, and, and also on uh, Twitter, uh, TikTok. Uh, I'm all over the place. Uh, you can find me everywhere. Um, but the best thing is either email me, info at votraj.ca, or give me a call. Because I really want to I wanna hear from you. Uh, and like I said, if you want to meet, Let's follow our COVID protocols. Let's follow the guidelines issued by Alberta Health. And I'm happy to do that. And, and even at the doors, I'm doing that, I'm making sure that I have my mask on and I'm keeping my two meters of distance because we are all in this together. We all together got to do our part to beat uh, COVID. And I'm pretty sure uh, as a proud Calgarian, as a proud Albertan, we have always, always overcome our, our adversities and overcome uh, any challenges thrown at us and this this challenge is no different we will definitely overcome this and for those who still uh, are, are 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 waiting uh, to get the vaccination i encourage please do so uh, if you can 
because uh, let's do it collectively. Um, thank you for that. I, I, I want to say to my viewers and to my listeners that the links to Raj's website, email, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram will be in the show notes. Uh, I jokingly say I do not, I do not link people's TikTok to uh, in the show notes because I do not believe in TikTok. I do not understand it. I'm the, of that age where I just do not get what it means, but I, I, it, he has one. If you want, you can go follow him, but I am not linking it. Um, <laughs> but I want to say this, Raj, because um, we have spent the last 15 minutes talking to each other and we need people like you in council. We need people like you in politics. So I appreciate you putting your name forward. You are honest. You are, uh, I, I feel like there's a sincerity with you. So I appreciate you doing this and I wish you all the best on October 18th. Uh, if elected, I, I will be inviting you back onto the show. So please look out for that email once I send it to you. Um, but I want to take a moment and say thank you. So thank you so much for doing this. No, thank you, Chris. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to talk to your uh, listeners or people who are watching on YouTube. Um, and, and, and this opportunity means a lot to me. And uh, when I'm elected councillor on October 18th, definitely, I will, uh, I will be back. And let's do let's do it periodically so I can give I can engage with our listeners because it's like I said it's all about two way communication. I want to hear from them. I believe in it. Sincerity and honesty is something we need more in politics. Thank you. Um, and now to my listeners and to my viewers, we are days away from election day. I'm going to keep on beating this dead horse until election day. If you do not vote. You do not get a say in the next council. If you do not co-cast your ballot, you do not get to complain on social media for the next four years. Get out, get educated, learn about the candidates, and vote. Vote for the values and morals that you want represented on council. Because at the end of the day, if you do not vote, you do not get a say. I, I, I'm a strong believer in democracy, and I hope people get out and vote. With that, Raj, thank you so much. Have yourself an excellent rest of the day. Uh, for everyone here at the Crossboard Interview Podcast, keep talking, everyone. <laughs>